the parents of these children are members of the international society for krishna consciousness or iskon the society was founded by the late swami prabhupada who began recruiting devotees in the lower east side of new york city in 1966 the goal of the Hare Krishna devotees is to establish a culture in the United States based on the Hindu Vedic literatures of India. This school is located in Culver City, California, where the Society for Krishna Consciousness owns a whole city block with apartment buildings, dormitories, a temple, and several income-producing enterprises. Why did God come here? To save all the condi- to kill the demons and save his devotees. What's going to happen to everybody else who's not a, a, a devotee? <laughs> right now, all the devotees are trying to preach to all the all the demons and make them take Christian consciousness. But at the end of Kali Yuga, Kalki comes and all the de- and it kills all the demons. What is a demon? A demon is someone who doesn't worship Krishna. What about people who worship all the other religions? There are hundreds of religions in the world. Well, what's going to happen to them? Like, um, they matter if they're pure religions. If they're not, if they're not pure, then, then they won't, um, then they won't exist. Like the Christian religion is, is a pure religion. Huh. But but um, but then the people they don't follow their laws like he says thou shalt not kill but he, but they kill the animals they say they don't have a soul and so they kill them and then they're gonna have to suffer at the time of death when the incarnation of Krishna comes and comes he will kill all the demons and then there will be the annihilation of the world the annihilation of the world. Burke Rochford, a PhD candidate at UCLA, lived with the Los Angeles Krishna community as a bhakta or novice devotee on two occasions. On the one hand, I think the lifestyle is a very rigorous and difficult one to endure. The scheduling is so very tight and the lifestyle is so scheduled and routine that it becomes a very much of a strain after you're there for several days. However, I do think that participating in the ceremonial aspect of the life and some of the community aspects as well is very exhilarating and and provides a great deal of good feeling for persons that are there. And I know that my my experience in the movement was one both of, of exhaustion from meeting up to the scheduling, but also one of exhilaration of participating in the community, in the ceremonial life, and just living as the devotees lived. How did your day begin when you were living with the Hare Krishna community? The day began very early in the morning at 3 o'clock. The devotees rise at that time, get prepared to go to the temple. In the morning we'll rise at 3 o'clock. The early morning hours are the best for spiritual practices. And by 3.30 we're all chanting. We chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. On a string of japa beads. That's the basic discipline of this Krishna consciousness movement. The mantra is the best device for controlling the mind.
कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम पर्सन्स हु कम इनटू द कम्युनिटी आर रिक्वायर्ड टू लिव अप टू व्हाट्स कॉल्ड द फोर बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स नॉट ईटिंग मीट बीइंग इन्वॉल्व्ड इन इलिसिट सेक्स टेकिंग ऑफ इंटॉक्सिकेंट्स और गैम्बलिंग इन दिस लाइफ टाइम देयर मिशन इज टू गेट बैक टू गॉडहेड टू गेट बैक टू द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड वेयर दे डू नॉट हैव टू टेक ऑन अनदर बर्थ the doors of the altar in the temple will open up and we'll see the forms of the deities it's as if the lord himself is on the altar we we'll have six artiks a day this one in the morning is attended by almost everyone in the community the devotees come together and worship Krishna as a community and i think for many of the devotees it's one of the most powerful and influencing forces that keeps them in the community a great deal of ecstasy is had by all कृष्णा कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम वन ऑफ द एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस कम्युनिटी इज दैट द मेन एंड वुमेन आर सेग्रीगेटेड एज मच एज पॉसिबल वी पे एज लिटिल अटेंशन टू द बॉडी एंड इट्स अर्जेस एज वी कैन सो आई लिव इन एन आश्रम विद अदर मेन ओनली अदर मेन And there's just enough space. It's not plush at all. It's basically the bare essentials. The less we have, the less we want.
work has a very important place in the movement because work in some senses is more than just work. It also signifies devotional service, which of course is the way in which persons become self-realized. They may be doing menial types of tasks or they may be working in the incense factory. Those types of jobs have significance towards the person's spiritual advancement within the movement. Although he does not wear the traditional Indian clothing, this man is nevertheless a devotee of Krishna. His job is to manage the spiritual sky incense factory. So by ISKCON. Currently, ISKCON is the controlling interest of spiritual sky scented products. And in that manner, um, the management of the company is uh, conducted by a select uh, number of devotees whose purpose is to assume the proprietorship of the business. And as far as how we compensate for the people that work here, this company is organized just like any other business in the United States. Therefore, we set wage or salary scales based upon the position that's being held. We follow the, the laws of the state or the federal government as far as the minimum wage requirements. And from there, we, we allocate salaries or hourly wages based upon the activity, the position, how valuable the services of that individual, and also how long he has been working. The devotees get paid just like anyone else, according to position. The devotee does have his own free will to do whatever he decides to do with the wages that he earns. Are you a Christian devotee? Yes, I am. Do you get a salary when you're working here? I'm being paid maintenance. They pay my rent and food. Almost everybody's Mexican. We're just Mexican people. Could I ask you how much you get paid per month for working here? 464. I'm the supervisor over here. Can I ask you how much you get paid? 450 per month. Tell us something about the airport and the effect that soliciting at the airport has on the devotees who do it. Well, I think there's two things. Of course, they, financially, it's very important that they work at the airport because the book trust is one of the very important businesses that, that the uh, community has to sustain itself. Also, I think that by working at the airport like the devotees do, by dealing with outsiders, it reaffirms their faith in the movement and the beliefs of the movement. Many times they're confronted with people who are, are be very belligerent. It reaffirms their faith in the movement and sort of points out some of the problems and the evils of the outside world. I don't know if I have enough change to give you. Well, uh, let's... What do you do anyway? Well, I'm, I'm from Virginia. I'm uh, a lawyer from Richmond. Uh-huh. What is this for, anyway? What we are printing books about Krishna, books about religion. Religion? What kind yes. of religion is that? The International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Hey, uh, you know, I'd be interested in getting my change, if you don't mind. Actually, I don't have change for a ten. Uh -huh. But would you mind giving five dollars? Please, well, the Lord will certainly help you. Why don't you trade me that ten? Here's a five. Trade me the ten, okay? Uh, actually, I'd rather give you the five like this, because I have some uh -huh. coins here. Okay, where's that? Okay, now wait a minute, where's my $10 bill? Don't you be, get harassed by walking around here and so on? Every day? I, mean, yeah. I do this seven days a week, 10 hours a day for three, four years now, and I can honestly say every day is full of a lot of harassment. But because I'm actually practicing what this book is talking about, I'm able to do it and not be disturbed. Because I'm understanding, I'm not the body. People can call my body a lot of names. They can try to abuse my body. Yeah. I'm not the body. I'm the soul. I'm the soul. Always wants to give unconditionally, regardless. So you want to give this book to me? Well, we ask for donations. We don't sell, but we ask that you can give a donation because we're helping people in suffering conditions. So you want a donation, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm not the rich person, but... Could you give a million? Yeah. Uh -huh. Would you like to give ten? No, I, uh, well, no, I can't yeah. give ten. Okay. Would you like to give five? No, I think that's well. You see, I'm not. I'm a foreign student, and I have all. Uh, you know, I don't have very much money, mm -hmm. so. But um, 
could you get four? That's only one more than three if you could do that. Hmm? If you could, is there any way you could get four? That's only one more than three. Well, I could, but that means I... I mean, I guess your organization is better off than, than I am. Don't you think so? Well, no, we don't make any money. We're volunteer workers. Hmm? We don't make any money. We're volunteer workers. <laughs> Thank you for your money. If you could just get one more, it would make my whole day. Hmm? You want one more? If you could, it really would. I don't make any money, but it'll look all help. Okay, I'll give you one more. You're a kind soul. Sometimes it's hard to be a woman in the community because you have to accept a position lower than a man sometimes. But everyone has their certain role to play. Like, I'm a mother and I accept all my duties around that. And the man gets to sort of the higher position sometimes. And for some women, that's hard not be at the top all the time, because the men are mostly at the top. But I like my position. I take care of my children and my house and my husband. I do some cooking for engagements when people come. And I like it, I'm quite satisfied. When my husband and I got married, it was an arranged marriage. And they just don't throw two people together and call that a marriage, you know. So you have to be compatible. And the authorities will be able to tell if two people are compatible or not. The women have not proven themselves very capable of managing things you know, day-to-day -day affairs and money. So as far as management of the temple and planning the preaching efforts and guiding our society worldwide, the women don't do those things so well. But they're very expert in other areas, and especially having babies. In the Vedic literature, it's very clearly stated that this is the fulfillment for women. The Vedic philosophy of inequality of the sexes is also reflected in the way the devotees educate their children. For the boys, they go and they live in a school with other boys and a teacher, and they learn from this teacher uh, about uh, cleanliness and austerity, and they have a strict program. They rise early in the morning, and they go to uh, Mongol Arti, which starts at 4.30, and then um, they go to um, Bhagavatam class, a class we have on a scripture. And then they go to worship of the spiritual master, a little ceremony they have. And then they follow a strict program like that under the guidance of a teacher. The girls live with their mother and father, and they do about the same thing as the boys, except in the afternoon, some of the girls take dancing lessons. Some are taking sewing lessons, and some take cooking lessons. I lived in Rhode Island, and um, the closest temple was in Boston. And I had some friends who had gone to Boston one day, and they, they had seen the devotees on the street. And um, they went to the temple and visited, and they, they liked it, and they encouraged me and some of my friends to go and visit. And I went one Sunday to a Sunday feast. That's what usually attracts a lot of people, you know. And I had a very good first impression. There was a boy on the steps of the temple, and he had a, a flower in his hand. And he, he, d he just looked ecstatic. And as he was smelling the flower, he said, how can one say there is no God? <laughs> Recruitment has changed somewhat over the years. From the early period when recruitment basically involved recruiting hippies and persons that were sort of disenfranchised or a part of the peace movement of the 60s and early 70s, by the mid-70s there seemed to be more of a predominance of people who were what might be called religious seekers. Now we see, for instance, more minority persons than we saw in the early 70s and late 60s. While the types of persons that have come into the movement has changed over time, there seems to be one central kind of thing that never changes really. And that has to do with one, the youth of the persons involved in the movement. And secondly, I think the marginality of many of the people who come into the movement. 
there seems to be an effort now to maintain persons within the movement and keep them in the movement the traditional western religious culture didn't attract me although of course i was raised in christian framework i immersed myself for seven or eight years just investigating religions and philosophies i came to a conclusion that religion is religion god is god there is one god previously my life was just simply based on uh, uh, getting some money and getting some intoxication and uh, um, uh, making do from day to day and uh, and uh, doing a some sort of a scam, so to speak, from time to time and uh, to make money and that was it. How did you join the movement? What were you doing before? I was uh, in the United States Army, stationed over in the Orient. I, I was packing a rifle. And of course, I realized that sort of nonsense was a big political thing. So I, I was searching for what we call the ultimate truth, the reality within yourself. That's what I was searching for. And by Krishna's grace, when I came back here to the States, I was still searching. And I wound up in San Francisco at the temple. As a result, I've been there for the last four months. It's given me an uh, inner satisfaction, which I, I haven't found, which I couldn't find through any other means. Do you think it's true that Christian devotees never leave the movement of their own volition? I don't think that's true. I do think that, that the devotees feel that anybody who desires to leave the movement should be talked to about that because they feel that their life and their soul is very special. So they make every effort to convince them that they really should, should continue to live their life within the movement. And if people then decide that they really want to go, my experience is, is that they do indeed go. I've seen many, many people leave the movement over the years. And, and while people believe on the outside that it's impossible or nearly impossible to leave these groups, nevertheless, people are coming and going continuously. Naturally. Mrs. Anna Mae Slavin, whose daughter has been in the Hare Krishna movement separation. since the mid-70s. And uh, after she had been in it for several weeks, she came home one day, and we noticed a drastic change in her entire personality from a witty, fun-loving uh, young adult, she became a very somber, serious um, individual, and we noticed that she didn't speak about anything other than the Bhagavad Gita. That's all she wanted to discuss. And, um, well, it, the, the change in her was so overwhelming Whelming, that we just couldn't believe it. How does your daughter now feel about people who are non-Krishnas? Well, I can only tell you what my daughter told me when she came home to visit one time. Uh, she told me that anybody that was not a Krishna was a devil or a demon. And she told me that I was a devil. They do not encourage any human, close human relationships at all. You see, they gave her a new name and a new form of dress and a whole new diet. Uh, you might say she was completely divorced from her former uh, way of life. I don't believe that any of them decide to leave on their own. I think that there's a very small percentage that leave of their own volition. Do you think you'll always be a devotee of Krishna? All your life? You try to. You gotta, you gotta try to not think of Maya and always keep your mind thinking of Krishna like in, like you should, like in Krishna, he heard of Krishna, just by hearing of Krishna, he didn't think of Maya and and he, he was liberated and he went back to home back to God. And, you think you'll always be a devotee of Krishna all your life? Why? <laughs>
It's fun. Are you always going to be a devotee? Yeah. How are you going to spend your life? What are you going to do? Preaching. Preaching. Are you going to stay here in California, or do you think you're going to go some other place? Other place? Because out there, everybody's suffering. Because if they're not suffering, then they wouldn't want to take drugs or anything to forget their suffering. They want to feel real good and satisfy their senses. So they try to do so many things, and they think they're enjoying, but they don't know that. As they're wasting their time, death is coming closer and closer. And they're thinking, I will never die, but all their grandparents have died. And so many people have died, but they think, I won't die. This religion is pure because it's been proven by our literature and books and also because many people said it was ancient and, tr and it's just the truth. We don't put anything bogus in it. We don't change anything. We learn it from our spiritual master. He came directly in disciplic succession. He doesn't change anything. And then we learn perfectly all the way from Krishna. See, we don't take all those other things, take drugs or eat meat. Our mind's much clearer and we don't watch television. We can wake up early and chant about Krishna and serve Krishna with our minds clear.